Kuzu Zangpo, and a very warm welcome to Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program. I'm Sonam Rinchen. Our top stories this week. His Holiness, the J. Kempo, conferred certificates to His Holiness, Gyal Sitriku Jigmiten Zinwangpo, and 61 other graduates of 2013 from Tango Shedra. If government approves the people's decision, the Gyalifu Dungak will be relocated to Umling Geok. And two secretaries have surrendered their government quarters following a circular of housing rules by the National Housing Development Corporation. And now the details. His Holiness the J. Kempo conferred certificates to His Holiness Gesetiku Jigmiten Zilwangpo and 61 other graduates of 2013 from Tango Shedra. Her Majesty the Queen Mother Dorji Wangmo Wangchuk graced the graduation ceremony in Punaka. The ceremony was also attended by Her Royal Highness Princess Sonam Dechen Wangchuk. The ceremony was held in the Kinre of Punaka Zong. His Holiness the J. Kempo conferred Master's Certificate to His Holiness the Gelsitiku. Gracing the ceremony, Her Majesty the Queen Mother Doji Wongmo Wanchu congratulated His Holiness Gelsi Triku and other graduates. At the age of five, His Holiness the Gelsi Triku was recognized as the eighth reincarnation of Gelsi Denzin Rabke, the fourth Druk Desi. Also among the graduates was Tiku Thukten Chofel, who also received Master's Certificate from His Holiness the Jekempo. This is the 16th convocation for Tango Shedra. Compiled for Chuni Dema in Punaka, Tenzin Rapki, BBS News. His Holiness the J. Kempo conferred Khadar to the principal of Talo Shedra in Punaka and vice principal of Kotoka Rinchening Thorim Shedra in Wangdi Fodrang. His Holiness the J. Kempo awarded Tashi Khadar to the 41 year old Drodil Doji, appointing him as the principal of Talo Shedra in Punaka. He is from Umakate under Daga Geok in Wangdi Fodrang, Zongkak. Prior to his present post, he served as a teacher at Tanku College of Buddhist Studies. At the age of 12, he joined Wang De Fodong Dratsang and completed his Dharthik Yangsum. At the age of 18, he went to Sha Chunyi Gemba in Wang De Fodong. There, he studied Shung Rigne under the guidance of Lekso Lube Hishi Rinchen. Later, he joined Tanku College of Buddhist Studies. After completing his studies from Tango, he received Chachin Chudup and completed his Lusum Chusum under the guidance of His Holiness J. Tizu Tenzin Dendu. 43-year-old Gesa Doji from Umakame in Wangdefodang is appointed as the Vice Principal of Kotoka Rinchiling Thorim Sheda. He joined Wangdefodang Drasang at the age of 7. For 13 years, Gesa Doji studied and completed his Karthik Yangsum from Wangdi Rabde. Prior to his current appointment, he served as a Shedder Lube at Sha Kotoka Rinchling in Wangdi Fodong. After that, he received Wang Lung Trisum from His Holiness the present J. Kempo Tikujime Cheda and J. Trisu Tenzin Dendo. Compiled for Chunidama, Pemasuki for BBS News. And His Holiness the J. Kempo consecrated the Lhakang Ningpo in Mata Lungchu under Tetsu Gyok in Wangdi Fodong. The 400-year-old Lhagang Nyingpo in Mata Lungchu under Tetsu Geok in Wangdi Furang has been restored to its former glory with the completion of the renovation work. The Lhaga was consecrated amidst traditional ceremony. The consecration ceremony was presided over by His Holiness DJ Kempo. The renovation work was coordinated by the Doji Levy of the Jungtrasang. The main Nangten of the Lhaga is the statue of Chaktong Chentong or Avalokiteshwara. The consecration ceremony was attended by the cabinet ministers and members of parliament. Meanwhile, His Holiness also gave long life blessings to hundreds of devotees who attended the ceremony. Dilhaga was renovated at a cost of some 14 million nultrum. Kampal Pukinsangtile, Pemasuki for BBS News. If government approves the people's decision, the Gelifu Dungak will be relocated to Umling. The relocation was finalized during the Dzongkak Tsogdu of Sarpang held on Tuesday. The Prime Minister during his recent visit to Sarpang Dzongkak left it to the people to decide whether to relocate the Dungkak or not. As such, the matter was taken up during the 7th Dzongkak Tsogdu meeting held on Tuesday. While the members agreed that the Dungkak has to be relocated, 
they could not come to a consensus on where to relocate, Chusagang or Umlingyok. To decide, the cubs and mummies of the 12 Gyoks cast their vote. With 14 votes, the decision went in favor of Umlingyok. Till now, Taritang and Umling Geoks have been facing a lot of difficulty in the absence of proper bridges, especially during rainy season. With the relocation of the Dunkak in Umling, as per the government, there will be proper road facility and people will benefit. However, majority of the Gaps and Mangmis of Geoks that fall under Gelifu Dunkak were not happy with the decision. There are seven Gyoks under Gelifu Dunkak. They said the vote was not fair and the Tsogdu was just a formality. Of the seven Gyoks, four agreed to relocate the Dunkak at the center. But when Gobs and Mangmis of other five Gyoks were included to vote, who actually have no idea about the scenario of these Gyoks, the result wasn't fair as it depended on favoritism. Therefore, we are thinking of submitting a petition to the government that it wasn't fair and that the four Georgs be allowed to report to the Zonkak if it gets relocated. We feel government should look into it. He said if it gets relocated to Umling Gyok, it would be impossible to commute during rainy season as there is no bridge over Taklai River which is located between Umling and Chuzigang. He added that the purpose would not be served then. They also said deciding a serious matter like relocating the Dunkak should have been given more time for deliberation than just a day. Shari Gurung, BBS News, Kilifu. Two secretaries have surrendered the government quarters following a circular of housing rules by the National Housing Development Corporation last year. The National Housing Development Corporation issued the housing rules last year in January to provide an equal opportunity to all the civil servants for an affordable housing. The corporation says the office is waiting for other civil servants who own houses in Thimpu to voluntarily surrender their quarters. There had been some volunteers coming up, which is actually a very positive response. But then this is not enough. So we will have to discuss it in a board of... We are in the midst of preparing a list of people who have houses and are still staying in the government quarter. So we are liaising with different agencies to come up with that list. And once that list has been finalized, we will seek the advice of the board on how to go about but as of now, we are asking for requesting people staying in the government housing and having a private house themselves to volunteer. 44-year-old Kezong Sidrup, who has been a civil servant for 23 years, has finally got his first affordable housing in Changchiji. Currently, he lives in a house that cost 10,000 yultrum per month with the salary of an accountant. Uh, I have applied for affordable housing facilities in the past when national property was responsible for it. They misplaced my application. In 2003, I again applied to NHTC and got the house today. Meanwhile, the corporation has received complaint regarding the reallocation process. However, to make the process transparent, the corporation is planning to reallocate houses online soon. According to the housing rules, a civil servant is not allowed to occupy government quarters for more than 10 years. The rule also states that in case of transfers, civil servants have to surrender the government quarter they have been living to the National Housing Development Corporation. Compiled for Ashok Tirwa, Kinzang Ishi, PBS News. The Green Bhutan project was launched in the capital by Prime Minister Tsering Tobge on Thursday. It comes exactly a month after the launch of Clean Bhutan Project. The Green Bhutan Project seeks to make Bhutan greener than it already is. The project aims to plant flowers and trees in all towns across the country. It also aspires to foster a culture of planting trees among the citizens.
The Green Bhutan team will work hard, but they alone cannot make a difference. Every citizen must support them. Please pray that this project will be a success in all towns and zonkaks around the country. Prime Minister Tsering Topke and the gathering planted trees near the Thimpu City Gate to launch the Green Bhutan project. The ministers of Agriculture and Health, the Jaika country representative and other officials were also present. The project is dedicated to the 60th birth anniversary of His Majesty the 4th Druk Gelpo, which is next year. Tenzin Rapki, BBS News. To address human wildlife conflict, the Ministry of Agriculture and Forest is now encouraging farmers in Tashigang to use the non-lethal electric fencings following a successful trial project in Bidung Georg. It is a nightmare for most farmers in the remote villages when the wild animals destroy their crops. Farmers try every method to keep the wild animals at bay. One method which farmers found it effective was to use the live electric wire fencing. But the method is not only illegal but also risky for both human and animal. Farmers now no longer use the live electric fencing after it claimed human lives in the past. And now the farmers are eyeing the non-lethal electric fencing approved by the government. The Ministry of Agriculture and Forests has set up 8 kilometers of electric fencing in Bidungayok on trial. The trial electric fencing has been successful in preventing the human-wildlife conflict. Before, we used to go from five in the evening to cut our fields, but now we did not have to go through these hassles. Ever since 2012, we never had this problem, and it's so helpful. The Ministry of Agriculture and Forest set up the non-lethal electric fencing on trial following a research in 2006. Research officials said the non-lethal electric fencing is not only safe but also affordable for the farmers. The ministry is now advocating the farmers to use the non-lethal electric fencing to discourage farmers from using the live electric fencing. In line with this, a day-long awareness program was held in Bidungayok this week. The electric fencing is expected to minimize the human-wildlife conflict and also curb rural-urban migration. The Bhutan Electricity Authority organized the awareness campaign in collaboration with Bhutan Power Corporation and Ministry of Agriculture and Forests. Cheche, BBS News, Kongdong. The Jemgang Gelifu Highway has now been lined with two signboards at Chaplekola questioning people about the rock bees along the highway. Since 2010, five people died in road fatalities after being attacked by a swarm of rock bees at Chaplekola, some 50 kilometers from Shemgang towards Kelifu. There were a total of eight accidents in the last four years. There are two signboards on either side of Chaplekola area informing motorists to close their windows. In the past, unaware travelers have been attacked by some of rock bees causing road accidents. The signboards were erected by the Department of Roads. 
We had many fatal accidents at the location in the past few years, and I urge general public to follow the instruction given in the signboards and travel safely. The last attack was in November last year, when an Alto car fell down about 75 feet while trying to escape the attack. Six people in the car escaped with minor injuries. In 2011, three people lost their lives. But will these signboards help bring in a change? Only time will tell. Kampal for Pema Samdrup, Kinzang Yishi, PBS News. This year, the Gelifu Tromde is constructing roads in the areas which fall under the local area plan too. This, the residents said, is not a good idea in absence of a proper drainage system. Locals said with monsoon approaching, it will flood the nearby houses and other properties with rainwater. Constructions of roads are in full swing, and these are the area that fall under the local area plan too in Gilifu. Roads will be there soon, but people say Tomde needs to construct a proper drainage system first. The issue was extensively deliberated during the recent meeting between the local residents and Tomde officials. If roads are constructed this way, small ponds will be formed where mosquitoes will breed. And I don't know when the drains will be constructed. I think it will take about five to six years. To this, Gelifutom, they said they are looking for solutions to address the issue. Previously, roads were all filled with rainwater during monsoon. This time, the roads will be raised little high to avoid that. And we have also planned to fix pipes to drain the water. The Tobe said it was all due to budget constraint that they are forced to just construct roads. Compiled for Puba, Tanin Finso, BBS News. Increasing number of villagers in Samtsi is showing interest in establishing the community forestry. The experiences from community forestry, which picked up from 2009 in Bhutan, shows a multi-pronged benefit. As these community forestries representatives from 15 Geoks and Samtsi met today to discuss their experiences, most of them shared it has benefited them. And perhaps it is this success story many are willing to establish more and more community forest, sharing their views on increasing interest in community forestry. Locals said people have understood the advantage of environmental conservation and benefits it has brought to their lives. Day by day, the forest resources are depleting. If we have more community forestry, we can protect these resources as a keeper. And in future, this will benefit us for timber and firewood. We are also more concerned about the environmental impact of losing our resources. That is why we are approaching to establish community forestry. The money we have collected is a source of loans for our members. If they are sick and have no money to meet the medical expenses, we give them. Or when they wanted to build houses, we give them. There are some who wanted to loan the money to start business, but we don't loan them since the money is strictly not for commercial gain. Om Prasad Gale, who heads the Janam Janam Community Forest, said, they are expecting to make 2 million nutrients from their 113 hectare area of forest. And this is the compensation of 1.8 million nutrients that BPC promised to give them for felling the trees in the community forest. But challenges are plenty. There are conflicts in our case. It is mostly the labor contribution during the farming seasons because they are engaged with farm works. But these are minor. We solve these issues among ourselves. I think the bigger problem comes only when you are dealing the monetary issue of community forests, like who should get what and where the money should go. 
Despite that, many communities want to establish the community forest. However, in October last year, the Department of Forest and Park Services suspended approving community forest. There are 15 unapproved community forest in Samsi alone. Samsi today has 35 approved community forest compelled for Sonampinso in Samsi. Pemal Hadden, BBS News. Developmental activities like farm road construction are posing risks to its paddy fields in Radigeok and Trashigang. Before it is too late, a major land rehabilitation program is being implemented in the Geok. These paddy fields are the economic backbone for the people of Radigeok. Almost every household cultivates paddy, producing maximum rice production in the Zonkak. Radi is often referred to as the rice ball of the East. But most of the paddy fields in Radi Geok are located in the steep terrain, with several streams running through it. But in recent years, the natural courses of the streams have been disturbed due to developmental activities like farm road construction. The paddy fields, therefore, are now at risk of being washed away by flash flood or covered by landslides during the summer. Some farmers in the Geok have already lost paddy fields to flash floods and landslides in the past. Now to mitigate the threat, a major land management program is being implemented in the Geok. Under the Gamri Watershed Management Project, stream causeways and walls are being constructed at the landslide and flash flood prone areas. <laughs> The construction of the causeway will help the farmers since the stream will flow in one direction swiftly and this will help prevent landslides. Farmers who are already actively involved in the land and watershed management project welcomed the initiative. Farmers said the initiative is timely and would help them protect the paddy fields. Before, since there wasn't much population here, we didn't face this problem. But now, with the construction of roads, the stream flowing from up has been disrupted and therefore causing landslides. We have so many paddy fields here, so now with the construction of the causeway, it will be benefited. Before, without the causeway, we sometimes do not get water since it's diverted everywhere. But now, the construction of the causeway will help us get water during paddy cultivation. The Geok will also initiate sugarcane plantation, bamboo and orchard development as part of the Gamri Watershed Management Project plan to curb land degradation. The rehabilitation works were initiated with fund from Global Environment Fund. Cheche, BBS News, Kangdong. Well, that is all we have for you this week. Join us again next week for yet another edition of Bhutan This Week. Until then, it is goodbye. I am Sonam Rinchen.